I'm Amelia Earhart. I was born July 24th, 1897 in Kansas. I enjoyed reading and writing. And I was best friends with my little sister, Muriel. We spent most of our time at our grandparents where we were very active. One day I decided to build a roller coaster. The first time I tried going on it, it failed and I fell off. But the second time I fixed it so it worked. But I had to take it down because my grandparents thought it was too dangerous. One day, my dad kept losing his job, and he had an alcohol problem. My parents got divorced, and my mom moved away with me and my sister. A couple years later, we moved back, and my parents got back together. And I started going to a college preparation called Ogant School. My sister moved to Canada, and one day I decided to visit her. When I was there, I saw many men wounded by World War I. I decided to move there and took a course offered by Red Cross. I started working as a nurse's aide at Spadina Military Hospital. Um, Then I met um, some people who were pilots in World War I, and I decided um, to talk to them about planes, and I was interested. And um, one day I decided to move to... New York City and study medicine at Columbia <laughs> University. Then I went to my first air show with my dad and paid a pilot for, to fly me around for 10 minutes. I knew I was born to fly. I really wanted to fly, so um, I worked at a telephone company during the week and flew during the weekend. When I earned my pilot's license, there were only about a dozen female pilots in the world. When I flew, I broke a new altitude record for a woman, 14,000 feet. Sadly, it was broken a few weeks later. I had to sell my plane and bought a car to drive my mom and my sister to Boston. Then I moved there and worked at a community center. I still wanted to fly, so I met with somebody about flying to England. Finally in June, me and two other men took off. We got lost and almost ran out of fuel, but then we finally spotted to land. We landed and were famous. George Putnam met with a reporter to say that I had just started a flight across the Atlantic. I should be admired because of my bravery and I loved and took very good care of horses. And I didn't let people tell me what I could and couldn't do. Betsy Ross was born on January 1st, 1752, the first day of the year. She was born in, she was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And right here, I have a map that is...
stuck in the chest. <laughs> Wait, it's a chest? And, oh no. And it has Pennsylvania on it. Right over here, Pennsylvania. You can put that on the table. Okay. And she had 16 siblings. Oh, oh, Betsy oh. was also a Quaker, which is a person a part of a religious group that, um, and a common dialogue for a Quaker would be to speak the and the thy a lot. And so her older sister, Deborah Griscom, was married to Edwin Bolton, which is important because Edwin was like an older brother to Betsy. And the reason I said Debbie Griscom was because before she had her married name, um, she was known as um, Elizabeth Griscom because Elizabeth was her name and Betsy was for short. Betsy also met Benjamin Franklin at age 10 in his printer shop. Betsy loved to sew um, starting from a young age and she was also very fascinated by ships because when she was young after school she would like to go to a wharf which is like a docking area and she would like to go watch ships and so she was she also used her sewing talent for an um for kindness and and for good deeds like as an example one time when she was on a trip to baltimore on a ship she she um, sewed um, a woman's dress because it was ripped. And Betsy was married three times because, uh, sadly, her husband's passed away. And so her first husband, where she got her married name, was John Ross. Second was Joseph Ashburn, and third was John Claypool. And so technically she could have also been known as Betsy Ashburn or Betsy Claypool. She started an upholstery business with John Ross at age 21. And an upholstery business is like a sewing business. And she, she used to be an apprentice for John and that's actually how she he met him. John Ross was also not a Quaker so um, Betsy didn't go to the um, Quaker church anymore. She went to a Christian church. And Betsy was also a seamstress, which is another kind of sewer, I guess. George Washington asked her to make the flag, and oh I have something over here. This is a flag. Um, the, this was the original flag with 13, 13 stars and 13 stripes to represent the 13 original colonies. 13 colonies. And um, I don't really know what to do with this. stars, which is like six pointed, so it had six points, but Betsy Ross told him that, Betsy, yeah, Betsy Ross, she told him that a, like, a five pointed star would be a lot easier to sew and it would use up less, like, material, so um, they went with five pointed stars, and that's very important because um, that might have changed the flag's design nowadays, and so... The flag was finished on June 14, 1777, which is now known to us as Flag Day. And sadly, Betsy died on January 30th, 1836, at age 84. Some of her major accomplishments is um, she sewed the first original American flag, as you already know, and Betsy Ross helped the cause of the colonial army. Reasons why Betsy Ross should be admired is because she was a patriotic icon and Betsy was put on a commemorative stamp in on January 2nd, 1952, 
which a commemorative means like a remembering stamp. And and I don't know if you can see, but over here it says uh, it like has a picture of her showing George Washington and some other men the flag. And so I'll leave this right here so you can see. And so I am going to share with you some facts about her. Okay, so the first fact is she was born with natal teeth, which are some teeth that you are born with. You are born with teeth, and it's kind of interesting. Okay, um, the second fact is she actually was really good friends with George Washington. They went to the same church, and she even sewed the very ruffles on his shirt. And Betsy sadly went completely blind at 76 years old. And, um, well, before I um, am done, I would like to uh, please say the pledge to the American flag. So, can you please stand up out of your seats? Oh. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before I go again, um, I have some sewing supplies and also um, when Betsy was getting older, sewing machines were becoming more popular. Here is some sewing stuff, like a Does measuring work? tape. And you could just like... Does it work? work? You sure. And yes, there's a needle in here. It fell out, but it's plastic. Does and that work? Yes, it works. And here is a plastic, <laughs> another plastic um, sewing machine. And thank you for listening.